Well, thanks, Becky and Darren. Those recipes, those snacks look delicious. I can't wait to try them. So, Tom, what have you got for us this year? I, I can see that you're dressed in your football attire. Well, yeah, that's what I usually wear on Sunday when I'm trying to go out and get the meat for the Super Bowl party. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you got something really special prepared uh, for us? Well, basically, I've got something that's pretty simple. We don't really even need a recipe for it, but uh, a few tips and tricks on mm -hmm. how maybe to serve it better. Okay, okay. And it's basically taco cups. And, and <clears throat> these little cuties, you know, when you can fill these with stuff, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. But uh, it's a little difficult to pre-prepare. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, um, I browned my meat, and this happens to be, of course, deer meat. Of course. And I chop it up, and, and just as I'm browning it, I chop it up very fine. Because it is very fine, no chunks. We're, we're no chunks, because we're filling tiny little things. And uh, you use a spoon, and you can fill those very easily. Uh -huh. And maybe your guests can fill them easily. You could you could make a tray of these and fill a bunch of them and put them on a cookie sheet and, and sprinkle cheese on top mm -hmm. and melt the cheese in the oven for a little bit and then set them out on, on your buffet table and they would look beautiful, but they're gonna be cold in five minutes. And mm -hmm. we've got a Super Bowl that's gonna last three hours, or, yeah, or four more. hours, whatever. So they're gonna be cold. So I think you need to take this Get it brown, put it in your serving crock pot, right. and set up a taco bar. And the thing about these little things is that we need everything that goes in to make it easy for your guests to serve it off the taco uh -huh. bar. Get stuff chopped up fine. Get yourself a cutting board and a sharp knife and cut things small. So it, it spoons into these little babies easier. And I'm, I picked Roman, romaine tomatoes uh -huh. because they're fleshy. And they, they don't have as much juiciness to them. They have more, they have more meat. So romaine, romaine tomatoes, very nice. A little and, easier uh, to handle. A little easier to handle and get them in there. And, uh, and then your lettuce. You know, when we, we chop lettuce, we'll, we'll um, we don't go far enough. We cut it into these, these uh, slim pieces and a, a good sharp knife. Keep your knuckles against the blade and you can get thinner slices so, and then turn that over and go again. So smaller pieces, again, for the smaller makes, it, makes it easier for you and you, you set those out in bowls along there, um, salsa, cheese for your guests, and your Voila. setup. They make their own and no muss, no fuss. Yeah. So that's about it. Oh, and the meat, a little taco seasoning. Deer is fantastic with, with taco seasoning. Mm -hmm. It's a fantastic to way to use your deer meat. Um, and I, I always package mine with no fat or anything I add. Another thing with deer meat, a little butter, a little olive oil when you brown it. And that's, that's about it. It's, it's a little taco bar and, and use these cute things. Set those out for your guests and, and make it easy for them to fill them themselves. So the it's, lettuce, all about, it's all about grazing and not a whole meal. This is just a grazing part. Right, right. And, and that's a way to make it taste fresh and, and uh, hot. Through, through the whole time. Yeah, because your meat will be hot and your cheese will melt on, your, on the meat, on the hot meat. Or the contrast of the cold cheese on top of it is still good too. Yeah, And absolutely. the cold lettuce and all that stuff. So basically that's, that's and it's, a, you know, everybody loves tacos. Can't go wrong there. So that's about it. What do you have for us? Well, mine is, a, it's a spicy um, chicken buffalo dip. Um, it's very, I've, I've had this before and I didn't realize how easy it was to make. So I thought I would share um, this with you if you've never made She's it before. She's been bragging all day that, that hers is gonna be the easy one to make. Well, I started off with um, one eight ounce uh, thing of cream cheese. It's softened, it's, it's very easy to stir. Um, and, and added two um, cans of 
chicken breast, canned chicken breast, which I've never bought canned chicken breast before, but um, it works. It's very easy. It's very tasty. Um, stir those together, kind of um, make the, uh, shred the meat a little bit so it's not chunky. We're all about smaller, no chunks. Another thing about smaller pieces of food, smaller pieces of food gets more flavor on every little particle. Uh -huh. Instead of having a big chunk of, of meat, you don't have flavoring on, on a big chunk of meat inside the meat. You have flavoring just on the outside edges. So the smaller you make your particles of, of food, the, you know, you go to a deli, you get thin sliced meat, right? Right, right. So you mix that together, add a half a cup of ranch dressing or blue cheese dressing, whichever you prefer. I prefer the ranch. And then the hot sauce is what makes it. Some like Frank's, some like Ott's. Um, I really um, don't have a preference. I like both. So um, just a half a cup of the hot seasoning hot, or the hot, hot sauce. Buffalo wing sauce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here you get the, you know, if you like hot wings, this is just as tasty as hot wings without the mess. So, and, uh, you know, you can dip it with um, vegetables or chips. And the last thing is just about a cup or a half a cup of, of shredded cheese. Mix that all together and pop it in the oven for 20 minutes and voila, you have a very delicious, easy to make dip. And then you, you dip that on any, your favorite chip. Your favorite chip um, or vegetable. I mean, you, some people like... Um, vegetables, no vegetables allowed at the Super Bowl party. You are allowed to have vegetables at your Super Bowl party. It can be a healthy night too. Some people are really trying to watch that. So, mm. you know, vegetables are not a, not a bad thing. They're a good thing. So this is kind of what it looks like all mixed up. And like I said, it's easy, delicious. And I'm going to pop this in the oven for about 20 minutes at 350 degrees, that magic number, 350 oh, degrees. Oh, so it is a hot dip. It's a hot dip. Yeah, you okay. want to serve it hot. Yes, yes. Yes, most definitely, most definitely. So just put it in a baking dish and voila, one more, one more snack for your Super Bowl gathering for uh, every, all your guests to graze on. Wonderful. Yeah, all right. In the oven it goes. And in the, the magic oven temperature goes. 350. Magic temperature 350. Everything cooks at 350. Yep, yep, yep. So there you go. We hope we have given you some additional quick and easy snack ideas for your Super Bowl, Super Bowl gathering, or really, like Becky said, anytime. And I like to say, I'm rooting for Denver, so go Denver. How about you, Tom? Who are you rooting for? Um, you know, the, the commercials and the halftime is, is about as enough for me. I like the action, but I don't care who wins. Yeah. What yeah. the heck? Yeah. It's all about I'll, the... I'll pick at about halftime, see who I want. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll be back here in a little bit, but now it's time to head to the studio and bring on our first guest who wants to talk with us about a much more serious topic. Debbie Martin and Melissa Eskew with Safe Passions join us to talk about teen dating violence awareness and prevention. On to a more serious note, this month is also Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month, and I'm so pleased to be joined by Melissa and Debbie um, to talk with us about this very serious issue um, and something that, you know, people may not think it's a real problem, but it really is. So, Melissa and Debbie, thank you for being here and sharing with us. Thank you. So, um, you're with Safe Passage. Let's mm -hmm. first talk about what Safe Passage is and, and some of the things it offers. Well, we're in Moberly, Missouri, of course. We serve nine counties. Um, we have a 24-hour crisis line. Um, we offer emergency such shelter in domestic violence situations. We can offer, if we also serve non-residents, and those are people that don't stay at the shelter. Um, we can offer them food, clothing. We also offer that to our residents. We have weekly support groups for women and children. Those are usually on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, life skills groups for our ladies, and um, legal and medical advocacy, and we also do a lot of other things, but. <laughs> it's a great resource, and people need to be aware of that, um, especially um, if you're having trouble, or know someone that's having trouble, um, Safe Passage is a, is a great resource for help. Yeah. Um, so if you, you know, if you don't know where to go, 
Mm -hmm. um, these ladies and the people at Safe Passage know know what where they can get help, what they can do. Um, and we provide services um, for nine surrounding counties, mm -hmm. um, and but also um, anybody can call. You know, we've we've provided services for people in St. Louis and you know in Kansas City and even down south. You know, if somebody that's trying to get out of a situation, um, to call us. You know, we can help anybody. Well, they say that one in three teens will experience some type of teen dating violence. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a, a astronomical statistic. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's different types of of violence. Most people think violence is hitting. But there, um, there's emotional, stalking, mm -hmm. sexual, financial, digital. Digital is a big thing nowadays because back in our day, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> um, but you can stalk somebody with a tel cell phone, track somebody with a cell phone. Um, did I miss anything, Melissa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like with um, Facebook and all the social media, mm -hmm. kids have a much different um, perspective or lots of different issues that they grew up are growing up with that we you know we didn't right yeah right. they do yeah and it makes it's maybe I mean it, you know it's a great thing you know to be able to keep in touch with your friends but in some cases it, it may it may be harmful and a lot of times because it's on the phone uh, whether it's sexting or something like that, you know, well, it's on the phone, so it's not really out there for the media, you know, when really in reality, if it's out there, it's out there, and it's out there for anybody to see. And a lot of times they don't realize that because they're doing it in their own private room, you know, and they don't understand that once it's out there, it's out there mm -hmm. for anybody to see. Mm -hmm. Well, um, can you give some advice to parents who may see things happening with their kids um, that you know might be a red flag, um, some things that they need to watch for for teen dating violence? When your kid doesn't want to, starts withdrawing from their friends and their family, that's a control thing. That's what an abuser does. He wants to keep you away from your family and your friends and completely and totally control your world. You see your kid withdrawing within themselves, that's a real red flag. Um, if you start to see them change in their dress, a lot of times the abuser wants them to look different. Uh, they want them to dress differently. Um, if you notice that, you know, that might be a, fl a red flag also. Um, if, you know, they're, they're constantly, especially if your kid has a cell phone, going back to the digital, um, and, and that phone is always there and, and it pings or whatever their message thing is, and they tense up. It's like they're texting them, where are you? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. um, if they just can't put that phone down because they might be trying to contact them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always wanting to know where they're at, what they're doing. So um, if a parent notices this or, or, or wants help and they call this shelter, what, mm -hmm. what are some things that, that will happen when they call? Um, first of all, they'd probably give them put them in touch with me, I'm the children's coordinator. I would probably just, you know, either if they want to talk on the phone, we can talk on the phone. If they would like to make an appointment, come out, get some tools from me that they can take home. I have a checklist they could take home to their child and say, you know, hey, I want you to sit down with this and put a check mark there and tell me, you know, are these things going on in your relationship? Mm -hmm. You've, and open up with your kids. I have tools I can give to parents or I can just talk to them and give them support. It kind of depends on how the parent wants to go. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can see where that would be very helpful to give them, you know, some, some way to help communicate mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. And ask the right questions. Yeah. Because um, the worst thing you could do is, is upset your teen and, and mm -hmm. want them not to even speak to you and that way you can, can it would be more difficult to get help. Right. right. So, well... This is all very good. Um, is there anything else that you would like to talk about, about teen dating violence or anything that, um, that you can share with our viewers? That we do have um, an activity that we just got in. Um, it is called In Their Shoes. Mm. And so we're able to go out to the schools. <clears throat> um, we're 
actually going next week to an eighth grade class um, in Rennick and we go around to different schools or youth groups and take this activity. It's an interactive activity um, that puts the teen in a situation, it's a scenario um, for a teen dating violence scenario and they have different choices that they can make with these cards and with these choices depends on the outcome um, that comes with that you know so it walks them through different scenarios of teen dating violence and we're able to do that with youth groups any youth groups um, church groups schools we really want to start getting more involved with say eighth grade is a, a great eighth grade and up is a really good age for that so that sounds excellent yeah we're really excited about it, yeah, to get out there. And Actually, get it. Rennick is going to be our first time presenting it. We are kind of excited and nervous at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so will you be the, doing the presentations? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's great. That'll be a, that's, that's wonderful. Well, um, anyone that wants this in their school, yes. they just need to call the Safe Passage. Call, call Safe Passage, yes. We'd love to come do it for you. Yeah. Very good. Are there, is there anything else? Well, I would like to mention we have a 24-hour hotline. 269-8111, and I should have said 660 first, I guess. <laughs> um, we also have a Facebook page and a website. If you just look up Safe mm -hmm. Passage, it'll take you to those things, Safe Passage in Moberly. And how many years have you been around? I mean, I, it seems like you've been around a long time and, and have provided Can I cheat many, look many, at my paper? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> many, many years of service to the community and is it's it 1995? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, you've got it. Yeah, okay. 1995 is when it was first established. And it was first established through some volunteers mm -hmm. that just seen a need. Um, and it was just the hotline only. And then it just, it turned into, uh, we got the building donated to us um, through Orsland. And um, so then we just became a 5013C and was able then to start with the shelter and start sheltering women that needed help. And then so it's grown from it's there. It's grown from there, yeah. It's a wonderful thing you do. It's a um, it's great asset to our community, and it's not just Moberly you serve. Just a mm -hmm. reminder, you serve nine counties. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. so um, very good information. And it's, it's unfortunate that we have to have a teen um, dating violence awareness and prevention month, but it's good that um, we talk about it mm -hmm. and that people aware that there is a situation or, you know, that this does happen and, and if you see anything do something to help mm -hmm. yes to prevent something terrible from happening right. I would like to add if you know if you have a friend that's in a teen dating violence situation you also are free to call and I can talk to you and help you help your friend mm -hmm. it just doesn't have to be parents oh yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. well Melissa and Debbie thank you so or, so much we appreciate you being here we appreciate I mean it's Super Bowl time we're all celebrating but <laughs> we also need to remember there is a very serious side and, and, um, and it's not just the month of February it's all throughout the year but yes. it's good to make everybody aware of it and hopefully you get other schools to uh, book you for the the yeah, um, we'd love that. <laughs> yeah the interactive session because yes that would be yes. great so yeah. well thank you you so thank welcome you. appreciate it <laughs> Thanks, Melissa and Debbie. Let's use this month to raise awareness about teen dating violence and take action toward a solution, both at home and in our communities. Yeah, they offer a great service there, so I hope if anybody needs them, takes advantage of it. So, Whether you help to solve a community problem or help to advance a worthy cause, volunteering offers many benefits. The gift of your time and expertise can help you make a real difference in someone's life. Jean Jones with AARP, along with her guest, Dale Willis, Volunteer Coordinator for Hospice Compassus, joins us with another segment of Volunteering in the Valley. Hi there. Volunteering in the Valley is a little frosty around the edges today, but you know we're coming close to the end of the worst of it, and we didn't catch what New York caught or Washington, D.C. caught. So let's just be thankful that our precip came in limited quantities. Volunteering in the Valley is a joint project between CVTB of Sheraton Valley and our local chapter of AARP, which is the Long Branch area chapter, serving the Macon and surrounding area. What we did was we got together because we felt there was a real need in our area for communication between agencies, projects, groups that had 
things going on that they needed volunteers for, but didn't have a really good way of getting the word out to the people who were potential volunteers. And that's all of you. So today we're going to visit with Dale Willis, who is the uh, volunteer coordinator mm -hmm. for Hospice Compassus. That's right. And they are a hospice service in a very large area in Northeast Missouri. We're gonna let him explain to us a little bit about how their volunteers work. Uh, they have a training program and they set up training sessions as needed for new volunteers. So Dale, tell us a little bit about how your volunteer program works, the kind of services that volunteers mm -hmm. can give us, and why that's important to the families that are involved with okay. hospice. Well, Jean, thank you for having me as a, as a guest on your program. Uh, hospice, most people are familiar with hospice, mm -hmm. end of life care, mm -hmm. and our volunteers are a very important part of the care we give. Of course, our team have we have nurses, we have chaplains, we have social workers, we have aides mm -hmm. who provide care to the patients and the families, and then we also have volunteers. Mm -hmm. And our volunteers are non-medical, they don't provide any hands-on care, but they do provide companionship. Right. So many of our patients live in their own home mm -hmm. or in a long-term care facility, and a lot of them really welcome an extra visitor just to come by every so often and say, how you doing? To chat with them, maybe to read with them or for them, uh, just to give them some companionship. Right. So that is one of the main uh, areas of service that our volunteers provide. And while that volunteer is providing companionship to the hospice patient, they're also providing respite for the caregiver. I've personally experienced, mm -hmm. I know what a blessing it is to have that couple of hours of freedom to go out and take care of the business kinds of things and the errands that you need to do and you need to be able to leave without feeling guilty about it. That's right. It. So one of the things our volunteers do is provide mm -hmm. caregiver relief, as you said. Mm -hmm. That's all, almost always in a home setting. Right. So the patient lives at home, with some sort of family member, maybe a daughter, a spouse, mm -hmm. who's providing 24-7 care. You know what that's like. Yeah. You know how exhausting that can be. So they would love to have someone who can come just for an hour or two, stay with the patient so they can have a chance to go run to the grocery store, get their right. hair done, et cetera. Right. So we have volunteers who can do that too. And you know that uh, kind of relief help is such a blessing simply if for no other reason than it lets you be free of that situation for a little while, get the world back in perspective so that you feel comfortable going back in and giving that care That's again. right, and we have some uh, family members, caregivers at home who for whatever reason, uh, they don't wanna leave the home. They wanna stay there with the patient but maybe they'll just go down and lay, lay down for a nap for a while. Mm -hmm. Just have a break, just, just right. get away, and that's really helpful. Yeah. yeah, or even make phone calls to family about the patient mm -hmm. or things of that nature. Yes. Now, I understand that sometimes you also use volunteers in your office facility. We do. Uh, we have volunteers who come and they help sort papers, they help file, they mm -hmm. put packets together. We have a mailing that we put out from our bereavement team very mm -hmm. frequently and they help with that. So there's a lot of administrative details mm -hmm. that our volunteers can help with too. That's really great because hospice is an experience that none of us are really prepared to deal mm -hmm. with. And all the help we can get is a blessing mm -hmm. when you reach the point where that's a service that you need. And we don't really think that we're ever gonna need hospice to come into our home and help us care for somebody. But, and I know how skilled the people are who work in hospice and how dedicated they are. And to have that volunteer backup is a wonderful thing because your paid professionals simply can't always do all the things that are needed. And here's the other thing. Our paid professionals are going into the home and each of them has their job they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. The nurse does her assessment to make sure the patient's comfortable. 
the social worker provides emotional support to the family and helps with resources. The aide provides personal care. The chaplain helps with spiritual care. When the volunteer enters the home, they come with no agenda other than, I'm here for you. If you want to sit and watch TV, we can watch TV. If you want to chat, we can chat. I'm here for you, and it's a beautiful thing. So tell the folks out here that might be thinking, this sounds like a niche that might work for me. Tell them a little bit about what they need to do okay. and how they can become a hospice volunteer. A lot of people who end up volunteering for hospice, they have a heart for this. They feel called to this. So if you have interest, if you would like to learn more information, I would love to hear from you. You can call me. I'll give our contact mm -hmm. information in a bit. And uh, hopefully you can come to our office. We can meet each other. I can give you an application. And then I always tell people there's basically three qualifications to begin serving as a volunteer. One, we have a training class. It is an eight-hour training class, and we offer that periodically at the office. Secondly, of course, we ask your permission to do a background check. So we perform a background screening on all our volunteers. And then third, we require that all our volunteers, as well as our staff, have a series of two TB skin tests to pr mm -hmm. just to make sure we're not transmitting tuberculosis. Yeah. And we provide that for them. Okay. And, you know, a lot of uh, groups now that use volunteers are beginning to have to require some training and some background mm -hmm. information. And also in a case like yours, I understand that you would probably do some training as far as privacy issues are concerned oh, and confidentiality. We just, the whole gamut, the history and philosophy of hospice, mm -hmm. how our team functions, privacy, um, honoring the patient and giving them control, uh, communication skills, the whole mm -hmm. gamut, yes. That's one of the nice things about hospice, too, is that it lets the patient and the family in that end time make decisions about how they want to spend That's it, right. who they want to spend it with, uh, and be free of that institutional atmosphere right. of being in a facility or in a hospital. And I know some hospice patients are in a facility oh, sure. right. while they're under hospice care but it gives a lot more freedom than the older system did before we had the hospices that could come in and give us that. People who know that their time is limited, mm -hmm. they don't want to be in and out of the hospital. Mm -hmm. They want to typically be home, surrounded by their loved ones, where mm -hmm. they're comfortable, exactly. So our volunteers are part of that care, and uh, that's what they do. So are you hearing something that makes you feel a need to step up and give a little help. Having personally experienced a hospice situation with a family member, it's a little raw shortly after, but I think if you've experienced a hospice situation and you've had time to absorb it and identify with the values that it has, I think you're ready to be a hospice volunteer. There are families out there that are facing things that they never imagined they would have to face. I personally have some dear, dear friends in those situations right now, and they've got so many devastating things to deal with that when the time comes for hospice, if you're willing to be the volunteer that goes in and visits with or reads to or just spends quiet time, with that patient while the day-to-day -day caregiver has a chance to take care of their mm -hmm. own needs. Because the first rule of caregiving is to take care of the caregiver. So you can give that opportunity to a caregiver as well as giving help to a, a hospice patient. Mm -hmm. Thanks again. It's been really great having you. We want to remind you of a couple of other groups that we've had on. Don't forget about the Boy Scout groups in our area. They're always looking not just for new scouts, but also for new scout leaders. Now, Dad or even Grandpa, how about a better way to spend quality time with the young man in your life? Also, we have had some experience with Bristol Care, and they are looking to set up some 
opportunities for volunteering in their facilities all around this area. They're very small residential care facilities, so they have limited programs and they're trying to expand. So if you know of a Bristol Manor in your area, there'll be contact information for them on your screen as well. We're looking forward to having some new groups come in and some groups that we've seen before. I understand 4-H is about ready to give us another uh, opportunity to visit with them and the Community Child Development Center. And we're hoping to have some of the other groups back on like the Agape Cafe and the Food Pantry. So keep in mind that when you have a little free time or even if you have to create the free time, the benefits that you get from being a volunteer will equal or outweigh the benefits that the recipient gets. Thanks again. Have a great day. And come and see us again on the next go round, and we'll talk about another opportunity. Don't forget to volunteer. Bye-bye. Well, thanks, Jean and Dale. It's important to get involved. Absolutely. Well, high school seniors, this is it. This Friday, February 5th, is the postmark deadline for your Sheraton Valley Scholarship application. You may mail it or drop it by any Sheraton Valley office location. Call 660-395-9636 with any questions. As a thank you to all of our video customers, we are offering three months of free Showtime programming once again this year. You'll be receiving your thank you notes and cards this week in the mail, and we'd like you to take the time to fill out the enrollment form. The address is on the card. Once you have completed the online enrollment, Please allow up to two days for processing. If you enjoy your Showtime programming after the first three months free, get half off your next three months of programming. Again, we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you. You're greatly appreciated, and we hope you enjoy this special offer. That is a great deal. Yeah, well, and with that additional, I mean, I think that'll, that'll really, as, as an added bonus, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. kind of on, on top of before. And go Showtime. Some great, great programming that has recently uh, just launched with new seasons, so oh, go ahead yeah. and check that out. Absolutely. Well, Tri-County Christian School is hosting their annual pancake breakfast this Saturday from 7 a.m. to 11 at the Crossroads Christian Church in Macon. It's featuring hot cakes, biscuits, and gravy, scrambled eggs, sausage, and bacon, the works. Start your day off right with a delicious and hearty breakfast. Sounds delicious. Well, the BAM kickoff is this Thursday, February 4th from 11 to 2 at Macon Comfort Inn. Booths uh, for volunteers, vendors, community involvement, local business sponsorship, and emergency pre pre preparedness will be set up to answer all your questions about the big event. Enjoy sandwiches and drinks while you learn about what Big BAM is all about from a group of leaders that are making it happen here in Macon. Valentine's Day is the traditional day for expressing feelings of love. For CBTV, it is also time to announce our couple of the year. The couple has been selected and will be announced, be announced next week. And we thank Hugo's Pizza Land for being the exclusive sponsor of this award. Sheridan Valley now has two offices in Moberly to better serve all of our Randolph County customers. Our current office is conveniently located in the plaza across from the highway from Walmart and now our authorized agent location at Fusion Technology. A grand opening celebration is set for February 19th. More information will come in the next few weeks. Mark your calendar for our Fat Tuesday celebration at the Royal Theater in Macon on Tuesday, February 9th. Enjoy New Orleans style meal while listening to the acoustic sounds of Kyoto. Uh, for reservations or call 660-385-2924. Many of us made a New Year's resolution to live healthier this year. And here's an opportunity for you to do just that. Core exercise classes are being held at the Wallsworth Community Center in Marceline on Mondays and Thursdays at 6 a.m and they're free of charge. So to reserve your spot, call 660-376-2743. In conjunction with Catholic Schools Week, Father McCartan School is hosting its annual spaghetti dinner this Thursday, February 4th from 4.30 to 7 at McCartan School. Carryouts are available and all are welcome. Employers, let CVTV help you get the word out about your job openings within your organization at no charge. Email your openings to the address on the screen. And Clarence Care Care Center is hiring CNAs, CMTs, and RNs. Call 660-699-2118. And Sheridan Valley um, has several openings. Check out those openings on our website at cvalley.net. Click on About Us, then Jobs. CBTV has many exciting upcoming shows this week, including Get Fit with Ludwig, Speed Training, A Senior Moment, Mats That Matter, Archery with Colby Dodd, and Making Veterans Day Assembly. So check out our weekly lineup at cvalley.net. 
Also, check out CBTV's YouTube channel for all your favorite CBTV programs at the click of a button. Simply click on the YouTube icon on Sheridan Valley's homepage. If you're experiencing issues with your computers, either at home or at your place of business, Sheridan Valley has a team of certified professionals ready to assist you. Call today to 660-395-9000, option 3, and we'll provide prompt, professional, and affordable service. Well, since the football season is coming to an end, our quote this week comes from one of the all-time greatest football coaches, Vince Lombardi. He is quoted saying, The quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence, regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. Well, that's a great quote, but that's my second favorite football quote. There's football season, and then there's everything else leading up to football season. <laughs> and unfortunately, we're getting ready to get into that time of year. So, yeah. 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 And unfortunately, the Chiefs nor the Raiders are in the Super Bowl, but it's been, a, it's been a great season. and Hopefully, it'll be a good football game. I think I've said that for too many years in a row, but that, that's yeah. we'll, we'll have good eats and, and time with family and friends, so enjoy yeah. it. Well, I think it's time we bring Becky and Tom back on with us, and uh, we'll uh... get to test some of that food we've been smelling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, we're all, we're, we're all here sure ready for the Super Bowl party. I've got my uh, taco bar here. And my soup turned out, uh, looks great on this chili. So what I went ahead and did is garnish it with some tortilla chips, broke those up on top, threw a little bit of sour cream on there as well. So I'm excited to try that. And my sausage appetizers just look delicious. I can't wait to try them. They turn out really nice. Well, and my buffalo chicken dip is, is ready to go. You can dip it with any type of vegetable, chips, and ready to go. So should we dig in? Yeah, we'll uh, kick off. 5.30. <laughs> All right. 